So a couple of things I've seen uh, people doing. And one thing is really good idea just to organize your code. So you're not supposed to have more than one main function in a program in an executable. Just one main. That's all you need. One main package and one main function. And so if you have a folder and you have a whole bunch of files with main, that's not going to be uh, like your um, editor, your IDE might start to complain and say, hey, there's some issues here. Or it might not. It might ignore it. But a good idea just to sequentially organize your code since we're in a class and we want to keep track of things as they occur. So every time you have a new thing you're going to work on, just right click your main folder for the class and create a new new directory. And this is not idiomatic go. And you know, give it a number. So I'd call my next one 100 maybe and whatever. And uh, and then I have that, and I come in here and I create a new Go file, and I'm going to call it main. And so inside here, I'm going to change my package to main. So in this folder, this will be the main package. And then I'll have a func main, and this will be my executable code. And uh, so that's just one thing I've seen. It's just make sure you're organizing your folders instead of having a whole bunch of files with main on the same directory, which is even worse practice than doing this. <laughs> but this is a nice way just to sort of keep it sequentially like oh, as I go through class and do different stuff. And so one of the things was how do we create a little calculator? So we could ask the user for input, format print, so this is pretty much just like the thing, and uh, enter a number. And now we could do format scan, and I need Sorry, looking like PHP there. And I need to create uh, num1, num2, and they're both in. num1, num2, int. I just gotta do that. num1, 2. There, uh, yeah, thank you, I do. That's what I need to do. Or num1. RNum2, and there we go. Thank you. Mini minds, enter number, and I'm going to duplicate this code here. Second number. And then. There we go. So let's see what happens when we run that. Three, five, fifteen. Nice, nice. The small things in life. So we're using stuff we haven't talked about here yet. You know, and so that's the thing though where it's starting to come together. We're using uh, memory addresses, so we're going to talk about that in the next presentation. Um, and then one last problem we did was, hey, what's the value of this expression? Well, I'm just going to copy all that, and then come here, and I can evaluate that expression right here, and just looking at my parentheses to see if they're all right, and then go run that. Ah, enter your name, that's not what I want. Oh, I meant the wrong one. I was using this one. Here we go. True. <laughs> that expression evaluates to true. True and false, or false and true, or not false and false. Evaluates to true. So let you look at that for a second. Is that because the third one was true? Well, how does and work? They need, to both be true. they need to both be true, right? Any other thing is false. And uh, how does or work? One or the other needs to be true, right? So this one right here evaluates to false, right? True and false becomes false. Isn't that right? right. And here, false and true becomes false. This one is false. 
is to have both of them and they both have to. And then here, both are false. So that's false. Oh, right? And the exclamation point makes that true. It's the opposite. And so false or false or true. One of them is true. Or true.